Hello, my dear friends. We have already discussed uh, two units of uh, product design and production and operation management. The subject is, and as a third unit, we have to study product design and process design. So let us understand meaning and objectives and also the importance of the subject one after the one with the help of slides and uh, as you know very well i'm dr pragna matteli who is working in government first grade college darwad and <clears throat> i have already uploaded uh, different videos on first two units of production and operation management okay friends let us understand the product design first it is concerned with the form and function of a product it refers to the arrangement of elements or parts that collectively form a product so what is a product you know there are different products which satisfy the human needs and every product will be having different elements or parts <clears throat> and how we should arrange the elements or parts is depending upon the product design it is the form and function of a product in the same way let us understand the functional design also it is concerned with the first and foremost requirement of a good product the product should effectively perform the function or for which it is developed so product is developed to satisfy the human wants as you know very well the aim or the purpose of producing a product is this product will be satisfying the human need or human demand so that is the purpose of the product here functional design is concerned with the requirement of a good that is good product the product should effectively perform the function for which it is developed so form design is concerned with the appearance and aesthetic considerations and also the size volume and weight of the product which are secondary to the performance of the product so why we need the product because we want it to perform so performance is the primary consideration for the product it has to perform it has to do the function for which it is being developed but along with the performance we need its appearance also how does it look how we feel but just by looking at it that is called as appearance and also aesthetic consideration how beautiful it is how big it is how convenient it is so it is size its size volume weight everything they are part of form design then comes the process design it is concerned with the overall sequences of operations required to achieve the design specifications that are to be used the machines and equipments necessary to carry out the process to produce the product as you know very well we need many operations to produce the product that is uh, <clears throat> the machines equipments are necessary to carry out the processes to produce the product so in which order they are to be placed how these machines and equipments are to be placed after which machine the next next machine 
has to be operated so which should be the first machine which should be the second machine that sequence are is to be decided so we have to decide the overall sequence of operations they are required to achieve the design specifications and we have to decide about the production design also the concept of designing products from the point of view of profitability it is known as production design it is conscious effort to design for prod producibility and low manufacturing cost so production design means it is the concept designing the products from the point of view of profitability to which extent it is profitable whether it is profitable or not so that refers to production design and then comes importance of product design what is the significance of product design as products are designed all the detailed characteristics of each products are established each product characteristics directly affects how the product can be made or produced and how product is made determines the design of the production system which is the heart of production and operations strategy what does product design do what is the use of it translating customer needs and wants into product and service requirements redefining existing products developing new products formulating quality goals formulating cost targets then constructing and testing the prototype documenting specifications these are all the functions of product designs then comes objectives what are the objectives of product design the overall objective is profit generation in the long run to achieve the desired product quality then to reduce the development time and cost to the minimum to re uh, reduce the cost of the product to ensure productivity or manufacturability are the things and now we have to understand the factors influence the product design customer requirements what is the requirement of the customer what does he need so what he needs we, according to his demand or requirement we will design how the product should be convenience of the operator who is using the machine who is using it so for his convenience it is to be designed trade off between function and form function is one aspect form or the appearance is one so there should be trade off between these two types of materials used are also important factor work methods and equipments cost or price ratio we have to think product quality is important process quality is also important effect on existing products and packaging then comes characteristics of good product design how it should be how a good product design should be so function or performance we have to think of then comes appearance or aesthetics then comes reliability and maintainability and also availability of the product producibility simplification standardization specification and safety all these points are to be considered then comes what are the approaches to product design designing for the customer for the customer how it should be we will ask him according to him we will design the product that is one approach another approach is designing for manufacture and assembly as from the point of view of manufacturer or the assembler you will design the product designing for ease of production so it should be easy for us to produce and then we will design according to that designing for quality <coughs> for good quality how the design should be designing for ergonomics designing for environmental protection designing for recycling designing for this uh, assembly designing for mass customization and other issues are also there 
so we will think from the point of view of computer aided design that is called as computer aided design cad means use of computer graphics for designing the product it helps to generate a number of alternative designs and identify the best alternative which meets the designer's criteria a number of products such as printed circuit board transformer automobile parts aircraft parts etc can be designed using cad in the same way there may be value engineering it is concerned with the improvement of design and specifications at various stages such as research development design and product development it is it comes under value engineering then let us understand benefits of value engineering that is cost reduction will be there minimum cost will be there less complex products means products will be more simple use of standard parts improvement in functions of the product so better job design and job safety will be there better maintainability and serviceability robust design these are all the benefits of value engineering then comes what is the process planning and process design at the time of designing and developing a product due consideration is given for the manufacturability or producibility of the product using current process of the product then what is process process is a sequence of activities that is intended to achieve some result typically to create added value for the customers process converts inputs into outputs in a production system it involves use of organizations resources to provide something of value no product can be made and no service can be provided without a process and no process can exist without a product or service so what are the types of processes then conversion process manufacturing process then testing process conversion process means converting the raw materials into finished products for example iron ore will be converted into steel by processes manufacturing process may be of three types that is forming process machining process and assembly process then comes testing process it involves inspection and testing of products then manufacturing process as i have mentioned it is of three types forming machining assembly so let us understand the meaning of it forming process include foundry processes such as forging stamping embossing spinning it changes the shape of raw material without removing the add or adding the material machining process means it comprise metal removal operations that is turning milling drilling grinding pouring or in all these functionings there will be metal removal operation then comes assembly process it involve joining of parts or components to produce assemblies that is welding soldering brazing riveting in this uh, you know uh, processes we will uh, involve joining of parts so removal of parts is of a machine process joining or joining of parts is of assembly and as it is raw material without removing or adding we can uh, have in forming process so these are all three types of manufacturing process then comes process planning process plan process planning is concerned with planning the conversion processes needed to convert the raw materials into finished products it consists of two parts one for process design and another one is operation design then what is process planning process design is concerned with the overall sequences of operations required to achieve the product specifications operation design means it is concerned with 
design of individual manufacturing operation. It examines man-machine relationship. Operation design must specify how much labor and machine time is required to produce each unit. Then comes process strategy. It's an organization's approach to process selection for the purpose of transforming resource inputs into goods and services. The objective of process strategy is to find out a way to produce goods and services that meet customer requirement and product satisfaction. Key aspects of process strategy that is make or buy decision, capital intensity, process flexibility, make or buy decision means it refers to the extent to which a firm will produce goods or provide services in-house or go for outsourcing. Means uh, whether the firm should buy or make. Make means to manufacture. Sometimes if we need limited uh, number of goods, then it is better to purchase, not to produce because for production, we need the machineries, uh, plant, and we have to install them. It uh, includes a heavy fixed capital. Then it is better not to manufacture, better to buy. So it is a very important decision that is make or buy decision. What is this process strategy? Capital intensity means what? Capital intensity refers to the mix of equipment and labor which will be used by the firm. Process flexibility means it refers to the degree to which the system can be adjusted to changes in processing requirements due to such factors as changes in product or service design, changes in volume of products and changes in technology. So process strategies, there are three processes. Process focus strategy. Repetitive focus, product focus. So three types of focuses we are observing. Then comes process management. It is concerned with the selection of input operations, workflows and methods that transform inputs into outputs. Process decision must be made when a new or modified product or service is being offered. Quality must be improved. Competitive priorities have changed. Demand for a product or service is changing. Cost or availability or materials has changed. Competitors are doing better by using new technology or new process. So major process decisions, that is process choice, vertical integration, resource flexibility, customer involvement, and capital intensity. Then what is process decisions? Process choice, as I have already mentioned, the production manager has to choose from five basic process types, job shop, batch, repetitive or assembly line, continuous process, project process. These are different types of processes and uh, production manager has to choose from these five, which is best one. So vertical integration means it is the amount of production and distribution chain from suppliers to components to the delivery of products to customers, which is brought under the ownership of a firm. Resource flexibility means the flexibility of resources such as employees, facilities and equipment. Customer involvement is the extent to which customer interact with the process. A firm which competes on customization allows customers to come up with their own product specification. So process decision means capital intensity. It means the predominant resources used in manufacturing. It consists of machines and equipments rather than human labor. So I have already mentioned that make or buy decision is very important. It involves considering whether to make or buy. 
some or all of the product or services. A manufacturing firm might decide to purchase certain parts rather than make them. Sometimes firm may buy all the parts from outsourcing and simply perform only assembly operations to produce the finished product. So factors considered uh, to make the decision of whether to make or to buy Available capacity, how much? Expertise, whether you are expert in this making or not. Then how about the quality, nature of demand and cost. So non-economic considerations are also there. That is availability of suppliers, whether there are suppliers of the raw materials. If they are there, then we can pur we purchase the raw material and we can manufacture otherwise uh, whether the suppliers of the product are there and then we can purchase that is the decision of buying is better desire to specializing control of design secrets reliability of outside suppliers lead time for procurement versus lead time then delivery schedules to be met Employee preferences for particular nature of work. When to make, that means when you decide to manufacture. Higher purchase price per unit of the item, if it is there, then it is better not to purchase because higher purchase price as compared to per unit product cost if produced in house. So we have to compare what is the production cost per unit what is the purchasing price per unit? Compare them and decide which is better. Assurance of timely availability because firm not to depend on outside suppliers. You know, uh, if uh, we are purchasing and the supplier is providing the goods within the time, then we can rely upon him. That is better decision. Availability of required facilities and capacity in house. So that means in our factory itself, how much facilities we are having. If it is full of facility and all, we can go for the manufacturing. Better control of quality on in-house operations. Need to preserve trade secrets and design secrets. If you are having your own trade secret, then better to produce only, not to buy. Savings on transportation costs of items from vendor's premises to the buying for. If you are um, purchasing, then you have to incur the transportation cost. So if you are per producing, the cost will not be there. Then uh, sometimes you feel that better not to produce, better to buy them. When, when the purchase price per unit of the item is lesser, than the production cost per unit then better go for purchasing not to buy no, not to manufacture when firm's requirement of an item is low and doesn't justify investment on special purpose then why to um, have the machines why to make the preparations of manufacturing better not to go for it and let us go for buying ability of outside supplier to supply at lower cost higher quality and faster delivery time, then better to buy them. When outside supplier hold a patent on a needed item, then let us ask him to supply. When opportunity cost of producing is much higher than that of buying. When there is no problem of trade secrets, that means you need not purchase of you, you need not prepare your own product. There is no question of trade secret. You can purchase them. When there is not enough capacity to make an item and increasing the capacity is not cost effective. When the item doesn't have a long term requirement, then why to go for it? So my dear students, here we have observed the theoretical part of it. And in my next video, I would like to solve the problems on it. So friends, now let us... Uh, understand the theory first. I hope you have understood and uh, let me end the video here itself. Give me the feedback if you have understood. 
that is well and good otherwise please give me the feedback that may improve my presentation and explanation so uh, dear students i hope uh, let us have a break and let us go for the next video thank you